Hey guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're continuing the final exam on thermodynamics, exam of 2021, and this is the second question, and it reads like so. A rigid insulated tank whose volume is 2 meters cubed contains air at a pressure of 1 megapascal and at a temperature of 350 Kelvin. Air is slowly released from the tank by opening a valve until the pressure of the air is reduced to 500 kilopascals. The temperature of the air in the tank is maintained at a constant temperature of 350 Kelvin by an electric, uh, electrical heater, and so the escaping air is also 350 Kelvin. Great, that makes our lives easier. A. Write the energy balance for such a process, and then calculate the initial mass of air in the tank, the final mass of air in the tank, the mass of air that exits the tank, and the electrical work in kilojoules required to keep the air temperature in the tank constant. For air, take Cp, C sub P to be 1.005 and R to be 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Note that these values are assumed to be independent of temperature and also assume that the internal energy is equal to Cv times T and the enthalpy is equal to C sub P times T. Okay, so this is the drawing that we have. We need to reread that and make sure that we um, observe some important information that is being given to us. So we have air inside this tank here, and then at some point we open this valve up, and then we allow air to leave, and we know as, it, as it's leaving, we're going to be losing some mass. There'll be some mass associated with this, with this opening of this valve, and also some energy because this, these air molecules are carrying energy with them as they're leaving the tank. But at the same time, we have our heater that through the joule effect here is supplying some heat into our some heat into our air and keeping the temperature 350. All right, so first things first, it's a rigid insulated tank, right? So rigid means it's not gonna change in volume, so the delta V, delta V will be zero throughout. And because it's insulated, we know there will be no heat leaving or entering this tank, okay? So the, the two meters, meters cubed here given is gonna be the same throughout. Uh, air te bed, temperature is slowly released, but the tank only evolve. Pressure is reduced to 500. The temperature in the air is maintained. So the temperature in the in the air, the, the sorry, the temperature of the air in the tank is maintained at a constant temperature of 350. This is very convenient for us because then that means that the whole time that this guy is leaving, right, the Q is being is replenishing the energy. So we're always having this at 350. That's very convenient because that means that that makes our life easier when calculating this guy here, right? Because instead of having to account for the change in energy that's occurring in the tank and then this change in enthalpy that would occur, we can just consider this a constant value. We can find whatever the, the enthalpy is for the value of 350. Um, right, the energy, okay, da, 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 okay, it's fine. And then this is the final, obviously this is the final approximation that we're taking C sub piece, so the heat capacities and the ideal gas constant as constant values. This would be a constant value regardless, but this one here was taking this as constant value because problem says so, but that allows us to use this value regardless of the temperature change. We know that in reality, C sub P is a function of temperature and then C sub V as well. By the way, C sub V is not given, but since it indicates we might need it there, we might as well find it from the start. We know K for here is 1.4, and we know that K is just Cp over Cv, right? So if I want to find C sub V, all I need to do is take my Cp and divide that by 1.4. That gives me uh, approximately 8 in the same unit, obviously, as C sub V. Great. Um, all right, so let's start. Let's start by writing the energy balance as we are required to do. And I'll first do it the traditional way in the sense that generally students, when they do this, they just memorize the equation and they write it down. But then we're going to do another way that I think is going to be more intuitive. It's going to be easier for you to understand what you're doing. So if we sum up all the changes, all the masses, and it multiply by the energy, so that's uh, potential energy plus kinetic energy plus the internal energy right in that tank. And I'm using internal energy here instead of enthalpy because we know this tank is rigid, so there would be no associated uh, flow here with this uh, mass inside the tank. And I take the initial mass of the tank and I multiply by potential energy, the kinetic energy, and the internal energy. That difference there has to be equal to any heat that went 
into our tank or out of a tank, any work that's been applied into the air of our tank, um, and any change in mass, right? So if any mass went into our tank, then that mass also carrying its energy, potential energy, kinetic energy, and in this case, if we're using entropy, right? So entropy of n, let's put it that way, entropy n, because obviously if it's going in, it's it, there's a flow energy associated with it, and then any mass going out, right? So that would be the same thing. So the potential energy of any mass going out, the kinetic energy of any mass going out, and then the entropy of any mass going out. Okay, so this is the you know classic way of doing it, and often students do this without really understanding what they're doing. And then if you did it this way, what we would have is because there's no nothing said about any velocity, we can disregard this. Nothing said about any significant change in height, we can disregard this. This guy is insulated, so there's no heat coming out of our tank into a tank or from inside the tank out of the tank. But we do have the heat related with the electrical work right entering the system. So we can put that in the form of this work here. Let's put E for electrical work. So we do have that term there. We don't have any mass going in, so this term here goes to zero. The whole thing goes to zero, right? This whole thing goes to zero. And then here, same thing. We don't have any relationship with the velocity or the potential energy. So this ends up being just, okay, so the, the mass two, or mass four, just mass on state two times internal energy one, uh, internal energy two, that makes no sense. Energy two, two minus mass in one minus internal energy one has to be equal to that work generated that we gave there through the electrical here, moving the mass out times the entropy out. Okay, so that will be one way to do it, and that's that will be our answer for part A. However, let's think differently. Let me think this way. Let's go ahead and draw. I'm going to draw the tank. Okay, let me draw the tank here. I'm going to draw it once, like so, and then I'll copy this two times. Okay. Now, on this first time here, this is where uh, we're going to be using the initial condition. I'm going to put it down here, initial. Okay, this is our transient condition. And this is our final condition. Okay? In our initial condition, we have one megapascal of air inside here. The valve is closed. So let's close this up. And we also have the temperature of 350 Kelvin. Okay, in the transient condition, that's when... Um, you know, mass is leaving and our electric heater is operating, then we're going to be, we'll have a mass out, and that mass out is carrying, you know, certain energy with it. But we also have, you know, the electrical work being done into the system. And then on the final state, what we have there is uh, 500 kilopascals instead of 1 megapascals, but we still have the 350 Kelvin. Okay? So, Let's think about mass for a second. What do we have mass-wise? So on this first one, I'm going to call the mass of the initial condition M1. Okay, well, let's just let's go call this one and this one two. Okay, so we have M1 here. Uh, related to the transi transient one, I just have mass going out. Okay, this mass here. And then related to my final, I only have mass two, whatever mass is left after I close the ball again. Okay, now let's approach this energy balance with a bit more, you know, of an intuitive drive. First, as a first condition, let's pretend for a second that our electrical work is nil, okay? There's no electrical work whatsoever. So, what will be the case here? That means that the initial energy, and it's, by the way, I'm doing a energy balance, okay? That means the initial condition has to be equal to the final condition plus any mass that left, right? So any in energy that left. So mass out times entropy out. That hopefully is intuitive. Why? Because we have, you know, molecules of air inside of here. These molecules of air, they leave, and then at the end we don't have those molecules anymore. But because we can create a destroy energy, if we sum up this this energy that left was left that left the tank, plus whatever was left in the tank, right? These two guys here have to be equal to the energy that was there initially. Right? So that's the first energy balance that I'm writing down, right? So the initial energy in our system will be equal to the final energy plus whatever left. Okay, and then we can approach this to, from a different perspective, which is exactly the opposite approach. Let's pretend 
for a while that no mass left. Right? So mass out. There's yeah. Okay, so again, if we do an intuitive energy balance, what, are, what will be the, the situation here? Well, the final energy, okay, so energy on state two there, has to be equal to the initial state energy, the energy of the initial state, plus whatever energy was given through the electric order, right? Because in this case here, what we have, well, we have a certain amount of energy to, from the start. We're giving some energy on the transient state, and then by the end of it, we have the same amount that was there before plus whatever was given right so this guy here by the end of it has to be the initial plus whatever was given the um, electrical energy so this guy should be greater than the initial one okay and that hopefully that's very intuitive for you so what we do now is we combine these two things so the two things are happening at once so now so now if we combine uh, the first plus the second together what we have is that we have the whatever energy is there initially plus whatever was given has to be equal to the final state plus whatever was whatever left, right? Whatever left our system. Okay, so I, th I think this is more intuitive, and then if this is, well, we can transform this now math mathematically, and then we have mass one times u one. And note that this is internal energy, not enthalpy, because we have a closed system there. There's no flow energy associated with this. The you know air is just just chilling in that tank. Then we have the electrical energy, which is what we're trying to find, right? The electrical the working form of electrical energy that was given to this guy. The final state is M2, U2 for the same reason as M1, U1. And then obviously have whatever mass left this system and then the enthalpy that left. Okay, so we end up with the same equation that we had before. This is another way of doing it. Okay. Obviously, if you have more things, if you have, you know, to look into velocity and all that, you might want to write down the whole thing. But if you just look at what's happening, it might be easier for you to do it intuitively. Cool, so we wrote the energy equation. Now what do we need to do? We need to do uh, the mass, I forget, the mass, the initial mass of the tank and the final mass of the tank and whatever left. Okay, so we basically we want to find out these guys here, this guy, this guy, and this guy. This is relatively easy because this is air. We can approximate air to be an ideal gas. And we have a hint of that when they give you the R right at the beginning. But we can find easily M1 using ideal gas. We can find M2 using ideal gas. And because of the continuity equation, we can find mass flow out, right? Because obviously, if you take whatever we have in the initial and we subtract whatever we have left, then we can find whatever went away from the tank. So let's do that. So the initial one, I'm going to just do, you know, PV equals MRT, M because I'm using R with the units of mass. So if I want to find mass one, all I need to do is pressure one, volume one, divided by RT one. We have all this. So this plug and play, be happy. So we have the Pressure on state one, what was that one? Was that one megapascal? Is that one megapascal? So it's going to be 2.3 kilopascals. Volume is two meters cubed. Cubed. And then R287. That's kilojoules per kilograms Kelvin. And then 350 Kelvin. Brilliant. This gives me 19. Point, whatever that was, 19. Point 91 kilograms. Uh, I would approximate this to 20 to be honest with you. You can probably do both just you know, see if there's any major difference. There probably won't be. Um, cool, so that is answer for part B. Part C, what's on what's the mass 2? Well, we're going to do exactly the same thing, so that's just going to be P2V2RT2. We have all that, so this is 500 now instead of the 1 megapascal. This is still 2 meters cubed because this is a rigid tank, so it doesn't really care what air is doing in there. This guy is still the same thing, it's never going to change. And then temperature does not change as well. So you can note that equation-wise this is exactly the same as before, except that our pressure changed, right? So, and it's halved, so this, the mass is going to be half of that. Uh, so if you divide 19 by 91, that's going to give us 9.955 uh, kilograms. But obviously if you divide the 10, the, the 20, you're going to get the 10 kilograms there. Okay, so that is our answer for part B. And, oh, sorry, C. And then part D is the difference. What was the mass that went out? Well, if I started with 20 and I now have 10, then obviously 10 left the tank. So I can do, how can I say this? I can do, because of continuity equation, uh, M1 minus M2, right? Brilliance. Then what do I need to do now? Or it's not even continuity, I guess this is actually first law, right? Or we can't really create and destroy mass. So 
if we don't have a mask flow rate for that matter, but that doesn't matter. So mass out will be just 20 minus 10, or if we want to do the instant density step, is going to be the same, right? 0.955 kilograms, about 210 kilograms. Cool. So that is that. And now for part E, which asks us obviously, obviously to calculate the electrical work and curvature. Cool. So now what we need to do is we need to solve this, right? We're going to solve this to be able to find what is the W E. Yes, to find W E. Now we know everything we need. I think um, we know this. We know this. Uh, we internal energy we can write down. Okay, so let's just write down stuff. Let me change this to blue. So we're going to have 10. That's where we went. Uh, U1, that's going to be CV times T, right? According to what the problem statement told us. So that's 0.718 times 350 Kelvin. Uh, plus what we're trying to find out has to be equal to mass 2. Oops, sorry, mass 1 is 20. Mass 2, this is 10. And then same thing, 0 0.718, 350. So know already that subtracting these two terms are exactly the same, except one is double the other. Um, plus, this is a 10 again, and then this is CP instead of CV, so this is 1.005 times 350. Okay. Unit-wise, they're all the same unit, and they're all, this is kilograms, this is, so this is kilograms times kilojoules per kilograms Kelvin times Kelvin. So unit-wise, what we have is kilojoules, okay? So that means that my, oops, one color. My electrical work is simply okay, that way, so it's going to be 10 times, or we can just do point, so that's going to be 10, 100.5 times 35. Sorry, I'm winging it here, minus uh, 71.8 times the 35 again. Cool, so now this is just 27.7. Twenty point seven. That's okay. So it's thousand four point five kilojoules. Cool. And then this is if you do the ten like I did, but just for the sake of it, if you do if mass two actually mass one is nineteen point what was it ninety one. 91 and m2 and m output are the same 9.955 then my work is what did I get 99.979 so approximately 10,000 kilojoules okay so that's just one negative it depends if you approximate it like I did or not a couple of things that are interesting to note here when we find this situation here, what ends up happening because because the m out because this guy is double this, okay, because this guy is the same as this, what ends up happening is that we have C V C V and we have C P here. So I could rewrite this as electrical work required would just be mass flow rate out or mass flow rate two if you wish, same thing, times temperature times the difference in CP and CV, right? This, according to the Meyer's equation or Meyer's law, Meyer's relationship, I don't know what you call it, this is R, right? This is the gas constant. So this is just mass out times temperature times R. So we could do the 0.287, it will be the same thing. That's why I do it. And this is, in, this is interesting, something for you to think about. The other thing that you may note that is that this relationship here, equal to PV, right? Because this is an ideal gas we're dealing with. So I'll leave this one as a thinker for you guys. Um, what else? Well, I think that pretty much does it for this equation, for this equation, for this question. We did part A, B, C, yeah. Okay, so that the amount of energy that needs, that this guy is going, given in has to be equal to whatever is leaving in the form of enthalpy, so that the in, and internal energy here is the same, right? So obviously you need to give energy for that to happen. The amount of energy is about one megajoule according to the energy balance that we constructed. So if you have any questions, let me know. If this was useful, like the video and subscribe to the channel so you're always up to date with our problem solving and tips. And I'll talk soon.